A very good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for taking out time uh, in a Saturday evening and be here. Uh, so I'm just going to make sure in the next 45 or 50 minutes that we talk about that whatever we discuss is worth your time. Uh, so we are going to discuss, uh, as Chetali mentioned, sections 11, 12, and 13 of the IT Act, of course. But I would uh, draw parallels with reference to how we uh, do contracts as per the standard postal rule. So there is a fair amount of assumption that I'm uh, making here that all of you have a little bit understanding of Indian contract law. And by little bit of understanding, I essentially mean that you understand what is an offer, what is an acceptance. Offer ka bota, acceptance ka bota, that we will cover. But I'm assuming that you understand ki offer ka matlab kya hota, acceptance ka matlab kya hota, agreement ka matlab kya hota, and contract ka matlab kya hota. Right? Uh, so without any further delays, uh, we will start. I have structured this session in a way that uh, for the first 15 to 20 minutes or maybe 10 to 15 minutes, we'll talk about how it is being done uh, traditionally. Electronic mediums are se kya change hue? Then I have created a few illustrations that I often rely on while discussing uh, sections 11, 12, and 13. So uh, I think about 20 minutes in the session, I will ask you ki agar aapke paas ek aur device se, or if you have a copy of Bayer Act of the IT Act, uh, it would be great if you can open it so that you can relate to what we are discussing and you can also take a look at the illustrations that we've got uh, for you. So uh, let's start with the basic difference that we have uh, when it comes to uh, traditionally how contracts are formed. So if you uh, take out the entire legal uh, way of doing contracts and if you just consider you and your friend and you tell your friend, Ki, Mujhe aisa karna hai, can you do that for me? And your friend says, Ki, achha, hai, par mere ko aisa kar dena. So you are asking your friend to do something for you. And then your friend is getting something in return for doing whatever you are asking them to do. So this is nothing but meeting of the minds. You are agreeing on a certain task. And then there is a deliverable for that task. Or friend kaam kar rahe, they are getting something out of it. So this is how agreements or how people do things in general. But when there is money involved, when there is a lot is at stake, you often prefer documenting things in the form of contracts. So jabhi, when we talk about uh, signing a contract, so the first step is you offer. And then there's a counter offer. So this is nothing but a part of negotiation. But jo humare, uh, the general principles that are there that have developed, let's say, over the course of last three centuries, uh, they, they basically say that there has to be an offer, then it has to be followed by uh, an acceptance and pehle offer ka communication hoga, it will be followed by communication of the acceptance. So, jab ye ho jata hai, you say that, okay, this is a contract. Now, we are not going to go into, uh, go deep into the essentials of contract. Again, I'm assuming here that you know ki contract ke kya kya essentials hote, legal hona chahiye, consent ki kya requirements hoti requirements hoti hai, capacity ke requirements hoti hai. Let's say that there is no uh, mode of communication. You can only communicate face to face. So I'm going to make an offer. The other party is going to say yes or no to it, or they are going to negotiate. And then we are going to uh, meet at a certain point and say, hai, uh, I'm going to do this for you. And this is what you're going to get in return. So this is how people used to do things before we started documenting this in the form of a paper entirely oral communication and there was no problem as such in the, not, not a major problem as such that ki acceptance kab hua hai, offer kab aya tha. But jese jese the global community started realizing that now we can communicate over large distances. Let's say that I'm sitting uh, here in Indore and uh, somebody, someone from uh, someone out of the attendees is in Mumbai. So you can uh, literally hear me with, I, I don't think more than a couple of seconds differences. So the communication system started developing and one of the earliest communi communication systems we had was in the form of your postal system that you can post something, the other party would receive it. And once they send their acknowledgement, you will say that, okay, ye humare paas acceptance aa gaya hai. Ab isme sabse badi problem kya hoti thi? That postal system essentially took a considerable amount of time. Now I'm sure most of you are used to uh, speed posts and stuff. But if you have seen how much time a post can take, it can be maybe, let's say we are talking about long distance postal systems. So it may take a month 
abhi postal system is very efficient because you have uh, uh, different modes of transport that can take you from one place to another very quickly uh, but when we did not have that much of luxury in terms of uh, modes of transport even one post that is supposed to be delivered to a certain location it would take a certain amount of time so when this is started happening the postal system started happening people started relying on the postal system sabse badi problem kya thi that let's say that somebody has sent me an offer now i want to accept it so jo mera acceptance hoga even that would be in the writing form i would write it on a paper or in the way that the offerer is expecting me to write let's say that i have written my acceptance i put it in the post box but wo time se delivery nahi hua ya fir kabhi deliver nahi hua right टाइम से डिलीवर नहीं हुआ तो प्रॉब्लम क्यों आएगी द प्रॉब्लम वुड कम बिकॉज द ऑफर इज एक्सपेक्टिंग योर रिस्पॉन्स इन अ सर्टन अमाउंट ऑफ टाइम नाउ जस्ट टू मेक श्योर दैट वी डोंट हैव दिस एंटायरली वन साइडेड कॉन्वर्सेशन सो हियर इज द स्मॉल रिक्वेस्ट फ्रॉम माई साइड टू ऑल ऑफ यू यू हैव अ चैट बॉक्स एंड यू ऑल्सो हैव समथिंग टू अ फीचर टू रेज योर हैंड एंड यू कैन ऑल्सो कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट इन बिटवीन वेन आई आस्क क्वेश्चन बाई सेंग यो नो इन द चैट बॉक्स सो आई नो दैट वॉट आई एम सेंग मेक सेंस so you can please use chat box and if anyone is comfortable in turning on their cameras you can because then it won't feel uh, like that i'm talking to myself on a screen so if you would like to do that you can also do that and if you would like to interrupt me in between and ask a question you are most welcome please feel free to do that i would really like if there is more participation uh, so yeah as people started realizing uh, the different modes of communication we started facing problems now the first and one of the most common problems even today it comes when at least in contractual disputes is when the offer was accepted now if you apply to some place let's say you applied for an internship or you applied for a job you get an email saying that you are kindly uh, if you would like to accept this offer you have to do it within 7 days over the email so the other person has specified that this is how we want the response to come and this is the timeline now just remove internet out of the picture and just go to let's say 1920s now somebody has sent you an offer and they are expecting that your response whether you are accepting it or you are rejecting it reaches to them within 15 days and somehow let's say that there is a flood and your uh, response doesn't reach out to them and they are expecting your response to come in a lot of business decisions that they are supposed to take depend on your response so now it becomes a problem from a commercial point of view so this problem started happening and then cases started come, coming up and when you have a lot of cases coming up uh, you have to develop a certain rule so that that rule gets applied to a lot of cases and you only need to deal with exceptions so uh, we see uh, uh, commonly we call it as the postal box rule or the standard postal rule or the mailbox rule so there are so many different names for it so what does this rule say this rule basically says that we are going to consider that an acceptance is going to get communicated when you enter your acceptance in the postal system this is what it says in theory essentially in practice when the acceptance or the letter of acceptance is beyond your control so let's say that somebody has sent you an offer right you have to accept it and acceptance will be deemed to take place when it goes out of your control or when you enter it into the postal system if you talk about this thing in practical sense how it would be implemented or how it would be considered in practical sense it essentially means that when you go to the post office and give your letter or if there is a post box you put your letter in that post box that would be considered your acceptance this is the traditional or the standard mailbox rule that we have had in place for so many years now after the postal system the next communication system we had was telegram telegram apparently simplified and to an extent cut down the total time that would be taken then after telegram we had communication systems like fax <coughs> sorry telephones emails so the major difference between your sta your standard postal system and any other communication system that has come after the postal system is the amount of time that it takes for one message or for one letter or for for one offer to reach from one party is in the offerer to the recipient is in the person who is being offered an offer right 
so then this again started creating problems why the standard postal rule considered that it would be considered acceptance when you put it in the postal system but now you have telegram you have fax and you have email and you have telephone where you can communicate your acceptance instantaneously almost instantaneously right now what if the communication channel breaks in between you are talking to somebody on the phone and your device uh, loses out on the network what would happen so the postal box rule uh, essentially considered that it would take time for your acceptance to reach so instead of considering when your acceptance is actually delivered you will consider that acceptance happens when you put it in the postal system in terms of judicial precedents and judicial developments as you can see on your screen this came in the case of adam versus lensil and 1818 the case law is from 1880 and uh, the issue was very simple that both the parties communicated in the form of postal letters and uh, the determination of when the acceptance happened was something that had to be decided by the court now as we have discussed so far the postal system of course takes time so the court essentially if you see the last bullet point that is in italics this is what the court said that where the circumstances are such that it must have been within the contemplation of the parties that according to the ordinary usage of mankind the post might be used as a means of communicating the acceptance of an offer the acceptance is complete when it is posted this is your standard postal rule or the mailbox rule and apparently this is this simple concept has helped in uh, resolving a lot of contractual disputes and but it faced a lot of challenges when you are electronic contracts or when your contracts that happened over instantaneous mode of communication started taking place now there are some researchers and some jurists that say that the mailbox rule is only an exception but there then there are certain considerations that come even in instantaneous mode fax is instantaneous you send it the receiver receives it same goes for a telephone or a voice call or a whatsapp call even for that case or a or an online meeting just like we are having right now but how we use email today and how we used to use email 20 years ago it there is a slight difference right now i'm not sure how many of you are aware of this or not there are basically two ways of how email systems work one where everything is saved all the emails are saved on your local device and the other one where all the emails are saved on the server and uh, they only get loaded to your system when you open the mailbox for example if you don't open your mailbox on a browser just let, let's just take your phone in notifications on your phone out of the picture so you won't get to see an email unless you open your mailbox right so this again started challenging the standard postal rule now there have been so many justifications that uh, email is an instantaneous mode etc etc but the big the a very good defense against this have been that i am not going to know if i have received an email unless i open it right if you consider this from the perspective of the postal system there is one very big difference let's say that somebody has posted it and the postman has delivered to your address it will be considered to be delivered irrespective of whether you open it or not but in email the early jurisprudence or the early liter literature on this issue suggests that you can only access your email when you open it and unless you open it your open your email you won't know how when and how the email came now there have been a good number of judgments in indian context i'm only going to talk about this so that we can trace uh, developments in terms of how the courts dealt with this issue and how section 11 12 and 13 uh, when they came in uh, form and shape in 2000 so we can understand the difference uh so if you uh, studied contract law i'm dead sure uh, you have come across this case uh, bhagwandas gordandas kedia versus girdhari lal uh here the issue was very simple uh both the parties were at two different locations and uh, they agreed to do something for a certain amount of consideration over a phone call so the validity of the contract was challenged and the court if you look at the third bullet point on your screen uh court said that you cannot challenge the validity of contract just because there is no specific legislation and when there when there are two parties agreeing to do a certain thing where the other party is getting some consideration out of it it would be as valid as a 
traditional contract. Now, there are a couple of other cases uh, before we finally get on to section 11, 12, and 13, which is, uh, this one is from 2010, Trimax versus Vedanta. Now, this was, I think, one of the earliest cases where uh, Indian courts recognized that you can enter into contracts over an email. Now, when IT Act came, it recognized electronic mode of communication as a valid uh, form of communication and electronic form of contracts as well. If you look at section 7 to 10, you will see that the legal validity is there. So the legislator legislations or the le lawmakers, they did their part, but it was still getting challenged. And then finally, it was being recognized by a court of law that no, this is going to be a valid contract. If I send you an email, if I write my offer in an email and send it to you and you re re reply to me and you say that, okay, you accept, that would be considered a valid contract, provided that it fulfills the basic necessary requirements of a standard contract. Again, those essentials are very simple. Capacity to contract, jo kaam karna hai, that is legal. We are not going to go there, as I mentioned earlier, but this is how Indian courts uh, develop the uh, jurisprudence on this. And then the uh, another issue with respect to electronic contracts, I think we are going a little out of our way here. But since we are discussing electronic contracts, I thought it must be worthwhile talking about this case. So uh, in this case, it was basically a tender process and parties uh, were, okay, I'm really sorry for that. Uh, parties were uh, required to uh, bid for a particular tender using uh, digital signatures. Now, if you look at the definition of digital signature in IT Act, and if you look at uh, the definition of electronic signature, a lot of people often get confused as to which is the broader one and which is the specific one. So the term electronic signature is far broader and digital signature is a type of electronic signature. So digital signature, you have a public infrastructure, you have a pen drive using which, which you sign. Another form of, uh, another example of electronic signature is your Aadhaar KYC. You put your Aadhaar number, you get an OTP, you confirm that yes, this is you. So there are only two forms of electronic signature recognized as per the IT Act certain schedule. The one is your digital signature and the other one is uh, your Aadhaar KYC. So the question before the court was whether tenders signed with digital signatures can be considered as duly signed or not. So even if we had a provision in the law saying that there would be, this was the issue before the court. And the court said that uh, while the contractual clauses of the tender clearly specify that uh, this won't be the case. But then there was a catch in this case that uh, the authority as in the Food Corporation of India had accepted papers from the same party uh, in the way that they accepted this time and then, uh, then denied that these are not up to the requirements. So they cannot uh, uh, follow, uh, they were not following a consistent procedure. So the court said that you will need to recognize it. Now, we are going to talk about section 11, 12 and 13 in the context of emails. I've got a lot of illustrations that are going to come after uh, one or two slides. So I think now would be now would be the time for you uh, to have your uh, copy of Bear Act open. Or if you don't have a Bear Act in printed form, it's totally okay. Uh, just open it on indiacode.nic.in, uh, go to the IT Act and scroll to section 11. So uh, if you've done that, uh, it would be really great if you can just type in the chat box that you are done and uh, we can proceed further. Let me know when you're done. The chat box is open. I can see a couple of thumbs up here and there. So, okay, awesome. Thank you for uh, responding. Feels good to know that somebody is listening and I'm not talking to myself on the screen. All right, uh, thank you so much for your responses, everyone. Let's uh, go ahead. Yes, somebody has uh, raised the hand. Uh, is there any question that you would want me to answer? Yes, sir. I had a question. Sure. Please. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Yeah, sir. In the, in the previous, uh, one of the previous slides, you mentioned that uh, uh, your regular email notifications, which is saved in the server or the uh, or your mobile phone, uh, put a question on the standard postal rule. Can you explain yeah. that once? Okay, so the postal rule essentially says that the acceptance would happen when you send you put your uh, you you put your letter in the post box, right? This has been the standard rule since it was developed in the early nineteenth century. 
now when technology developed you had new forms of communication that were happening almost instantaneously let's say fax or your telephone now you had this new mode of communication email that was being marketed is let's say that this is the fastest form of communication blah 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 but then there was a problem that was identified that okay that it is happening instantaneously yes but let's say that i have an email address and you send something to me this facility that you can access your mailboxes through your phone and you will get notifications for your email it was not in the early days of email right you will need to connect to the internet open a particular mail service and then make sure that all of your mails are loaded and then only you will get to see your email so this was the uh, challenge in a way that uh, i have received an email in my mailbox but unless i open it i won't know if you look at the postal rule at the same point it would be considered delivered when it has reached your address and the postman has completed the delivery but when the postman uh, does the delivery it notes that okay this has been delivered but for the mailbox and let's say that i i don't retrieve my emails for a month so i can might as well uh, go in a court of law and say that i only accessed it today so it should be considered the date of delivery should be considered today so this was a challenge and let's say that i've got five email addresses and you send me you send me an email on an email address that i barely open in a month so this particular problem has been very beautifully addressed in uh, section 12 and 13 that uh, we'll see i hope this answers your question Yes, sir. Got it. Nice. All right. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, thank you so much for your responses, everyone. Uh, let's move on uh, to section eleven. So section eleven is very simple, which is attribution. Uh, attribution is essentially understanding or identifying that who has sent this email, or who I am going to use the word email in place of electronic records, so that it it is easier for all of us to understand, and also for the for two more terms that you will get which is originator and addressee so in place of originator we will use the word sender addressee we will use the word receiver so make sure that uh, you don't get confused uh, originator is defined under the it act addressee is defined under the it act okay. originator is somebody who is sending an electronic record and addressee is someone who is receiving an electronic record or who it is addressed to so in order to keep the discussion simple and make sure all of us understand what i'm talking about uh, we are going to use the word sender and receiver so uh, section 11 if you look at section 11 uh, if you want to read it be my guest but if you want to uh, understand it simply i can explain it right here so section 11 bas- attribution is also defined so section 11 basically says that uh, a particular piece of email can be attributed to a certain party in three possible situations first when the person who is sending the email is saying that i have sent an email then you will say that okay this email has come from this person second when they give permission to another person to send it on their behalf uh, would would anyone like to give an example of this yes sir if i authorize my pa to send an email on my behalf yes very appropriate for example a lot of emails that i have to send from my official email address i have to dictate it to my junior so it would be cons- it would not be considered that my junior has sent it i gave my authority to my junior or my associate to uh, send that email on my behalf so it would still be attributed to me third one uh, when it was sent by an information system or an automated system using the name of the sender now i'm sure you would have uh, subscribed to a lot of newspapers i'm sorry newsletters that you receive in your email right do you receive emails from your bank giving you offers do yes, you sir. receive emails from uh, yes. flipkart yes. and amazon right so these emails are automated emails nobody is manually sending millions of emails every day but even when you receive an email you say that okay this has come from flipkart or this has come from amazon so you are attributing it to the originator even though the originator/sender used an automated program to do it 
So when you have to identify that who is the person who has sent this, there are three possible situations. जब उस व्यक्ति ने खुद ही ने भेजा है दूसरा somebody on behalf of that person has sent it and third when they've used an automated program to do it ek bahut simple sa automation ka example hai uh, scheduling how many of you have used uh, scheduling on your emails a lot of times it happens that i i draft an email at 2 am but oh, i know that using. it doesn't look good to send this email at 2 am so i will schedule it for 9 am right so what i am doing is i am using a feature that is going to automate that sending at 9 am right so these are three possibilities where we can attribute it to the sender are we clear till this point okay now section 12 and 13 is where it gets even more interesting uh, so i'm going to show you an uh, an illustration in front of your screen and i would quickly ask you to take a look at subsection 1 of section 12 right so now this is talking about acknowledgement acknowledgement is essentially sender ko ye pata chalna ki jo usne bheja hai wo receiver ke paas pahunch gaya this is acknowledgement so acknowledgement of receipt so section 12 subsection 1 has two clauses first any communication by the addressee automated or otherwise and any conduct so if you take a look at section 12 sub section 1 and i am you i'm using this illustration to make it simpler even for me as well as for you so the sender if you take a look at this message can you see this message this is my job offer to you let me know if you accept right so the sender is saying that this is my job offer to you let me know if you accept now in this situation the receiver can send a send an automated acknowledgement or send something like okay i accept your offer or if you take a look at clause b here it says any conduct i will give you a very interesting example somebody applies for an internship at my firm i give them an offer and i tell them that okay see this is my offer to you and we are supposed to start at Uh, 10 a.m. on 28th of May. Now this person doesn't respond to my email, but he's standing outside my office at 10 a.m. on 28th of May. Would I consider that as an acknowledgement? Do you think that would be an acknowledgement? Sir, can you repeat the question? Yes. So let's say that somebody applies for an internship at my office. Yeah, that can be right. so somebody applies for an internship at my office i send them an email offering them an internship at my office but this person doesn't respond to me but he reports on the day that i say that okay we are going to start on 20th at 10 am and this person is standing outside my office even in that case jab sender ne nahi bola hai ki usko acknowledgement kaise chahiye to jo receiver hai uske paas multiple options hai wo acknowledgement ki receipt देने के विच इज गिवन इन क्लॉज ए इन क्लॉज बी ऑफ सेक्शन ट्वेल्व सब सेक्शन वन तो क्लॉज ए एसेंशियली से या तो वो ऑटोमेटेड हो सकता है या मैनुअल आप रिस्पॉन्स दो या फिर दूसरा यू डू इट बाई कंडक्ट और यू डू इट बाई परफॉर्मेंस नाउ मूविंग फर्दर इफ यू टेक लुक एट सेक्शन ट्वेल्व सब सेक्शन टू सर आई एड क्वेरी सर श्योर गो एड या सो इफ यू है योर एक्सेप्टेंस टू दैट पर्सन but the person has not confirmed uh, your acceptance and uh, directly he comes on the uh, internship day that uh, i am that uh, and by that conduct we are assuming that he has accepted it but what if you uh, uh, but what if the sender in the meantime re revokes the original offer given to that person and says, gives good. gives it to someone else and the second person accepts it, accepts it on email very, so whether, very good uh, question uh, just give yeah. me may 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 know your good name uh, abhigyan singh sir Vigyan, Abhigyan, just give me five minutes. I am going to answer this question. Just let me be done with subsection two and subsection three, and then we'll talk about what is the right way to uh, do this acknowledgement and receipt of acknowledgement, right? So section two and yes, subsection two says that sender is specifying acknowledgement. Usko kaise chahiye, right? So if you look at the message on your screen that the sender is sending, this is my job offer to you. please send your acknowledgement as a response to this email within 7 days 
otherwise the offer stands cancelled right if you look at the previous illustration sender ne sirf job offer bheja hai sender did not mention how they are expecting the response and what is the time frame they are expecting the response but in section 12 sub section 2 the sender is specifying that they want a response as a response to this and this email within this many days and this specific duration and if you don't respond the offer will stand cancelled right so the the first we saw the first way of doing the acknowledgments this is the second way of doing the acknowledgments is given in sub section 2 of section 12 now let's move on to the third one so this is coming from sub section 3 sub section 3 mein we are talking about a situation where the senders just sends an offer without expecting or without specifying how they want the acknowledgement so the first message from the sender is this is my job offer to you let me know if you accept it but then the receiver doesn't respond in any way so the sender then sends another email in the form of a reminder that hi i sent you an offer please send your acknowledgement within 7 days otherwise the offer stands cancelled now this situation is covered in sub section 3 of section 12 where pehle in the first in instance the sender did not specify but after the sender remembers that they have to do this so that they don't turn into trouble then they specify that i i had sent you an offer please accept within 7 days otherwise the offer will stand cancelled right so these are three possible situations first where the sender is not specifying how they want an acknowledgement second sender is specifying the duration and the manner in which they want an acknowledgement third in the first instance they don't but then they specify so sub section 3 essentially says that when the sender has specified even though they didn't do it in the first case or the first instance it would be considered ki jo baad mein specification hua hai aapko waise acknowledgement bhejna hai aap ye defense nahi le sakte ho ki unhone to pehli baar mein bataya nahi tha now you have gone through all these three situations first second and third if you are somebody who is going to make an offer to another party out of these three situations which is more appropriate what would you recommend what do you think excuse me sir yeah sure go ahead yes ma'am uh, so if uh, the sender sends this message uh, second email uh, after 3 days uh, from where which date we will consider the 7 days सेवन डेज विल यूजली सेवन डेज स्टार्ट जब दूसरा वाला ईमेल भेजा गया है okay, क्योंकि पहले पहले में कोई भी स्टिपुलेशन नहीं है तो जब स्टिपुलेट कर दिया है तो या तो सेंडर ऐसा करे कि वो सेवन डेज में लिख दे दैट दिस वुड आई विल आल्सो कंसीडर दो थ्री डेज दैट आई ऑलरेडी गॉन अदरवाइज जो जनरल प्रिजम्पन होता है वो ये होता है कि जब से स्पेसिफाई किया है तब से दिन गिनना चालू होंगे थैंक यू प्लीज गो एड सर uh, अगर टाइम जोन अलग हैं देन इन दैट केस मतलब दिल्ली का टाइम जोन माना जाएगा या न्यूजीलैंड का माना जाएगा मतलब वेर एवर uh, जहाँ से सेंडर और भेज रहा है ईमेल ओके वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग क्वेश्चन जो उनका ऑटोमेटेड सिस्टम से ई मेल जनरेट होता है बट ई मेल के अंदर फ्रंट बॉडी में कुछ ज्यादा टर्म्स एंड कंडीशंस नहीं है बट जब हम लिंक्स पे फर्दर क्लिक करते हैं ईमेल के अंदर फिर उस लिंक में भी लास्ट में उनके कंडीशंस वगैरह मेंशनड है जो कि बेसिकली ब्लाइंड करने के लिए है यूजर को कि वो कंडीशंस मिस हो जाए डेलिबरेटली इन दैट केस कुछ हो सकता है ऐसे केस में कि आप आपने रीड तो कर लिया ई बट वो एक्सप्लिसिटली मैंशन नहीं थी टर्म्स एंड कंडीशंस एंड हम चैलेंज कर सके कि ये पर्पसली यूजर को मतलब इट्स लाइक हाइडिंग द इंफॉर्मेशन यू आर गिविंग बट यू आर स्टिल हाइडिंग द इंफॉर्मेशन सो प्योरली फ्रॉम अ कॉर्पोरेट परसपेक्टिव दिस इज मोर ऑफ एन एथिकल बिजनेस प्रैक्टिस इशू देन अ लीगल इशू बट इफ वी कंसिडर इट फ्रॉम अ प्योरली लीगल लेंस आई थिंक इट वुड बी अ वेरी लॉन्ग शॉर्ट 
at least from my understanding. Okay, okay. Because when you are getting an email, a reasonable person would be expected to understand what they are signing up for. Mm -hmm. Now, if you prepare your defense in a way that you say that these are ed tech companies, they are using aggressive marketing practices, uh, they are purposefully hiding something, so that might as well be a good consumer dispute. But whether it would be a proper contractual dispute is something that I think it would be a long shot. Okay. Okay. Thank right. you. Okay. Uh, so uh, uh, coming back to my question, you have three possible situations in front of you. Section 12, subsection 1. When the sender has not said that acknowledgement is necessary. Subsection 2, where the sender is specifying the duration and manner when it is necessary to acknowledge the and three, where the sender forgets in the first instance, then remember that you have to do So let's say that you are a lawyer, you are supposed to advise your client. Out of first, second and third, which one would you recommend to your client? Or let's say that you are entering into a contract, making an offer to someone. Out of this first, second and third, which one would be the most likely way to do it? Yes, I, I see a lot of responses coming in. Second, second is the most appropriate way of doing it because one, I think, sir, kisi ne question pucha that uh, bina time specify ke offer dusre ko de diya. So, in this situation, mein, if all of this is happening on electronic form, to section 11, 12, or 13 mein, uh, jada kuch uske paas nahi hai kyunki usne wo offer recent nahi kiya. And when you have not specified a time frame that if you don't do it within this much time, your offer continues to remain valid. So that would be a, a challenge. And just to make sure that you don't end up in disputes like this one, second is the most feasible way to go about it. So now the sender has sent the offer. Now let's come to section 13. Section 13, my friends, is a very simple provision out of all other subsections in section 13. Section 13 talks about dispatch. When will it be considered to be dispatched? So if you look at the second uh, part of the sentence in section 13, subsection 1, it says the dispatch of an electronic record occurs when it enters a computer resource outside the control of the originator. So if you see this illustration on your screen for section 13, subsection 1, you will see two parallel lines uh, on the right hand side of the sender's computer. So these two parallel lines will be my point of reference for a lot of at least three or four illustrations that are going to come now. So at this point, when it goes beyond the sender's control, at that very instant, at that very instant, it would be considered that that particular email has been dispatched. Right now, this is one potential issue that I think would come before the courts, but I'm not sure how much time would it take to come before the Indian courts. Uh, how many of you have seen this feature on Gmail where you click on the send button, but you can still undo it for four or five seconds. Have you seen this feature? Yes. So even after clicking on the send button, that dispatch is not going to happen till after five seconds. So more technological development mean more challenges to the laws that we have. So you click on send, but then you still have five more seconds to undo that. And if you don't do, if you don't click on the undo button or whatever the button that's there, then it would be beyond your control. And when at the very moment that you cannot uh, undo the sending of email, it is beyond your control. According to section 13, subsection 1, it would be considered that the dispatch has taken place from the sender's email. Is this clear? So far, so good. All right. Now, section 13, subsection 2, subsection 3, and their clauses is where it gets a little difficult, but even more interesting. So we'll first do the 
easy things and then we'll move on to the complicated ones. So first we'll start with section 13, subsection 2, clause B. Now, if you look at the clause B, it says if the addressee has not designated a computer resource with specified timings, receipt occurs when the electronic record enters the computer resource of the addressee. There are two things here. The dispatch has taken place from the sender's end. Now, in subsection 2 and subsection, uh, uh, in subsection 2, clause A and clause B, we are going to talk about receipt. Dispatch is done, sender is sent. Now, when the receipt is going to happen is illustrated in section 13, subsection 2, clause A, clause B. Clause A, a has further two subclauses, so two situations, and then clause B. So clause B essentially says there is a concept here called designated email address. Jab receiver ne nahi bataya hai ki designated email address kaun sa hai, at which particular email address they would want the offer to be sent, receipt would be considered when it enters their computer system. Right? So if you see those blue lines, now if you take a look at this email, rajpagari at the red gmail.com is not my work email. So if somebody sends me an email there and I do not have a designated email address and I have not conveyed my designated email address to them, the moment it enters on my mailbox, it would be considered that I've received it. Right? Now, if you are a little confused here, section uh, the clause 1 and clause 1, uh, subclause 1 of clause A is going to make this easier for you. So, uh, if you look at Subclause one of clause A, it says receipt occurs at the time when the electronic record enters the designated computer resource. But here, if you read clause A, it says the addressee has designated a computer resource. Yeah, uh, Vasundra, just give me a moment. I will address that. So here, if you see this illustration, I have specified very clearly that please only send me emails at contact at the cyberblogindia.in. The sender sends me an email at contact at the red cyberblogindia.in. So it would be considered to be received when it enters my mailbox. Now you might as well think, Abhi to kya hi difference hai? Pehle bhi to yehi hua tha. So clause, subclause 2 here is the difference. The receiver is saying, please, please, please only send me emails at contact at the red cyberblogindia.in. But the sender sends me an email at rajpagari at the red gmail.com. So the receipt of that email will not happen when it enters my mailbox. It will happen when I open it, when I open that email. Right? Okay, interesting question. Uh, let me respond to this once I ask everyone if they are clear on this. So uh, there are three situations. First, जब receiver ने नहीं बताया कि उसको कौन से पे email चाहिए, दूसरा receiver ने बताया कि उसको कौन से पे email चाहिए, तीसरा receiver ने बताया उसको कौन से पे चाहिए and the sender has sent it to some place else. So in this situation, I'm sure if you open your passbook, your bank's branch has a designated email address, right? Have you seen your passbook or your statement, right? Even it's there on the bank's branch yes. boards, right? So why? Precisely that if you send something, uh, if you send something to a different email, let's say if you send something to a branch manager's email, bank have a plausible defense that their designated email address is the branch email address. They are smart about it. You may not be. Today is the day, right? So. If you have a designated email address, receipt will happen when it enters your mailbox. When you do not have a designated email address, receipt will still happen when it enters your mailbox. But if you have a designated email address and this other person sends it to someplace else, then the receipt will only happen when you open that email. So out of all these three possible situations, 
are you going to have a designated email address or not? What do you think? No, I'm asking, uh, are you going to have a designated email address? See, design, having the benefit of having a designated email address is that if somebody sends you an email at an address that you have not specified, you have a defense that the reset only happened when you opened it. Okay. Uh, now that I see a few yes, that's a relief. Uh, I have a few questions that I've received in person uh, on DM as well as on the chat box. Uh, <clears throat> So one, this is from Deepika. Uh, what if the receiver has provided two email and the email is uh, sent on only one? Can the receiver dispute that he has not received one in one on his another email? So he will not accept. Now, see issues like this are yet to come before Indian courts. And we are yet to see a constitutional court ruling on this. But from my understanding, if somebody is saying that uh, send me an email on this and mark me a CC, I would consider both of these email addresses. I will deem it to be a part of designated email address. That if I'm specifying that essay, essay, bejo, essay, bejo. If I, if you're not doing that, I won't consider the receipt. From my understanding and interpretation of section 11, 12 and 13. Okay. Vasundra has said, uh, but has not read that email. Pada does not matter if you do not have a designated email. If you have a designated email or wo dusre email pe gaya hai, then only it matters if you have access the email. If you put up your email and you receive there, receipt will happen when it enters your mailbox. Nahi bataya hai aur aya hai, to bhi it's going to happen when it, when it enters your mailbox. But if you A bataya hai and the email is come at B, then it becomes, then it gives you a little bit of luxury uh, that yes, uh, the receipt will happen when you open the email. So sorry, my friend. Sorry. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, go ahead. This, this, is, go ahead. this is interesting, but little confusing. Okay. Yes, so yes. I have not, I'll take the case one. I have not given my designated email address in that case. Whenever the email will come, the sender will have the benefit of doubt because I did not give the my email address. And so whenever I'm receiving it, that's the timestamp of receipt. First no, thing. So if you are not specifying your email, mm -hmm. the receipt is when it enters your mailbox. Uh, enters my mailbox. Yeah. I'm receiving it. That is the timestamp. Yeah. Second case, I am uh, telling uh, the sender that this is my designated email address and they are sending on the designated email address. Then yeah. also whenever my system is receiving the email, yeah. same case as the first one, it will yes. be considered as received. Receipt. Yes. Third case that uh, I am giving a uh, ABC uh, email address, but the sender is say, sending on X Y Z. In that case, I have the benefit of doubt that till I read that email address, it will not be considered as received because the sender did not send it on the designated email address. Yes, exactly that. Okay. okay. The Thank only you. benefit is that if they end up sending on a different email, you can say that. It will be considered as received when I opened it. Yeah, uh, but, sir, sir, but this, sorry, sorry. Just one yeah, thing, yeah. sir, I've got a little confused because initially when you, you were building our foundation, you said that till the receiver does not read his or her email, it will not be considered as, uh, you know. So, yes, uh, let me address that. Mm -hmm. So now that you have internet accessibility so easy, that you open your mailbox and everything loads. Let's take you back 20 years ago when you had to retrieve your emails all at once. And then there was a server which will store your email or you will store your emails locally. So then unless you connect your system to the internet next time, the server won't send you the new emails. But now with cloud in place, this problem has been totally addressed. Hmm. So even if you don't open your email, the email is there on your email box, on your Gmail. Right. 
right so it is just you have to access it also i think i received one of the questions related to spam and before i address something else i would take it up that spam is the problem that has become so big of a problem now when the it act came and when we had those early systems of emails spam was not a problem right so yes i would say that even if it goes to spam it would be very interesting how the coach do it but agar uske mailbox mein gaya hai aur wo designated email hai then it would be considered as per section 11 12 and 13 as what we have discussed but wahan pe ek bahut acha defense hi aa sakta hai ki they have sent so many emails that it is getting marked as spam par ye technical defense hoga legal nahi hoga तो कोर्ट्स कैसे डील करती है ऑन दिस विल बी वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग या सर बट द पर्सन इज नॉट एक्सपेक्टेड टू रीड दैट स्पैम ईमेल ना यस वही तो है कि टेक्निकल डिफेंस है सी सेक्शन 11 12 13 है एज इट इज है फ्रॉम 2000 राइट 2000 में ईमेल कम्युनिकेशन क्या था आज क्या था देयर इज अ लॉट ऑफ डिफरेंस सो आई एम आई एम मोर देन हैप्पी कि यहां चेंजेस होना चाहिए बट टिल द पॉइंट वी हैव सेक्शन 11 12 13 एज इट इज दैट वी हैव टुडे यहाँ पे स्पैम का कोई कंसिडरेशन नहीं है यहाँ पे सेंड करने के बाद हम अंडू कर सकते उसका भी कोई कंसिडरेशन नहीं है राइट आई हैड अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग केस आई वुड लाइक टू शेयर आई थिंक आई विल टेक फाइव मोर मिनट्स देर वॉज दिस केस वेयर द सीओज ईमेल वॉज बींग एक्सेज was being managed by uh, their executive assistant and uh, the ceo apparently went for a series of meetings with another company that they were intending to do business with and of course the email was being handled uh, by the assistant but ceo also had access to so, gmail mein ek function hota hai that you can implement a rule कि अगर इस पर्टिकुलर ईमेल से कोई ईमेल आएगा तो इट विल डायरेक्टली गो टू ट्रैश सो दिस असिस्टेंट अपेरेंटली टुक सम मनी फ्रॉम अ कॉम्पिटिटर एंड इंप्लीमेंटेड दैट रूल ऑन द सीईओ ईमेल अकाउंट उनका गूगल वर्कस्पेस पे था पूरा सो so, अभी सामने वाली कंपनी ने ऑफर किया वो ऑफर का उसमें टाइम लिखा हुआ है वो जो सीईओ का डेजिग्नेटेड ईमेल है उसी पे आया है बट क्योंकि इस ईमेल का एक्सेस एक और ऐसे पर्सन के पास है जिसने वो रूल लगा दिया है कि वो सीधा ट्रैश में जाएगा तो यहाँ पर अगर लेट से दैट दिस एंड अप बिकमिंग अ कॉन्ट्रेक्चुअल डिस्प्यूट तो जो सीईओ के साइड से एविडेंस होगा दैट वुड बी पुलिस कंप्लेट दैट अनऑथोराइज एक्सेस और अनऑथोराइज मोडिफिकेशन व डन टू देयर अकाउंट Sir, what one query here? Uh, isn't the CEO also expected to know what are the rules implemented in his Gmail account? In in the regular course of business, ideally I would say yes. But in the regular course of business, C-suit executives are so much reliant on their support staff that there is a good chance that maybe they don't know that these rules are written in Gmail. Oh, okay, sir. Right. For example. i only got to know after using gmail for like what 6 to 7 years kaisa bhi hota hai and had it been the case that this case would have come up to me and mujhe nahi pata hota to i wouldn't be able to advise them so there are so many things that are there that were not there 20 years ago 25 years ago when these laws were being formulated so all we can do is have an academic discussion about it interpret them consider different possible scenarios and wait for a judicial pronouncement to come okay uh, so there is this question uh, if i am receiving a mail in cc can i say it is addressed to me as well uh, cc ka i think full form hota hai carbon copy so if you are receiving a carbon copy of an email you might as well consider that it was addressed to you as well how would a sender know that the receiver has read or not through read receipt feature see again uh, read receipt feature ye jo aajkal hum third party tools ke through karte hain this was not there when section 11 12 13 came and that's why they have said ki agar aapko acknowledgement chahiye to aap usme specify karo that you need acknowledgement of receipt in this much duration 
right so i you you can refer to section 12 here again uh, will digital personal data protection address such things i don't think so i think a, I, a couple of questions have been sent to my dm uh, which talk about non repudiation where a person can deny that he hasn't received probably can be confirmed via email trail and there is another question what role would audit trail of receiving email server play very interesting questions uh, so audit trails for email servers can be a very good piece of evidence but a lot of times when you have uh, small disputes happening uh, between two parties email servers are not, not often called out for so that would be one barrier to this practical uh, implementation abc and xyz companies entered into a contract with certain terms and conditions on email okay the contract was negotiated and agreed upon solely by the sales manager from xyz company okay after some time the sales manager's line manager head is not willing to honor the agreed upon contract terms and condition from a legal point of view what can abc uh do in this situation so uh, legally if the sales manager yes the sales manager if the sales manager was authorized on behalf of the company to sign this agreement this would be a valid agreement and if this is a valid agreement it does not matter whether it happened on email or it happened on paper if it is a valid agreement and xyz company is not are uh, going to honor their part of the agreement abc can of course file for non performance of this particular contract or whatever uh, the requirements that were there i hope i've answered all the questions do we have any other questions okay uh, if you don't have any questions i will quickly go through uh, subsection 3 uh, 4 and 5 So, uh, so I think somebody asked the question about the place of uh, uh, something related to the location, right? So, subsection three says that the dispatch ki location will be this would be the location which would be the place of business for sender, or receipt ki jo location will be that would be place of business for the receiver. Section four me likha hua hai. It wouldn't matter where the computer resource is located. जो लोकेशन होगी दैट वुड बी डिपेंडेंट ऑन देयर प्लेस ऑफ बिजनेस सो आई माइट बी इन डेली बट इफ आई एम एक्सेप्टिंग अ कॉन्ट्रैक्ट ओवर ईमेल जो उसकी रिसिट की लोकेशन होगी इट वुड बी कंसीडर और इट वुड बी डीम्ड टू बी इंदौर बिकॉज दैट इज माय अपेरेंटली द रजिस्टर्ड प्लेस ऑफ बिजनेस सेक्शन फाइव में कुछ कुछ कवर्ड है चीजें दैट इफ देर आर मल्टीपल प्लेस ऑफ बिजनेस देन प्रिंसिपल प्लेस ऑफ बिजनेस वुड बी कंसिडर्ड प्लेस ऑफ बिजनेस इफ यू डू नॉट हैव अ प्लेस ऑफ बिजनेस the usual place of residence will be considered place of business and in terms of body corporates it would be the registered address so uh, i hope uh, i have been able to answer your queries and i have been able to explain section 11 12 and 13 i created this illustrations when i was in law school because i initially found section 11 12 and 13 to be complicated but ever since i have created these illustrations i have always found them easier to understand uh again i would like to thank everyone from the asian school of cyber laws uh to send me an invitation for this session and uh, organize this session and i would like to thank more importantly all of you uh to take out time on a saturday evening uh, to attend this question, uh, attend this session and uh, you all of all of you have been really great at being responsive and asking me questions and i really liked talking about this today because i was asked a lot of questions if you have any further questions uh, you can feel free to reach out to me on linkedin or on my teams email that you would have seen contacted with cyberblogindia.in it would eventually get forwarded to me uh, with this i hope you have a very lovely uh, weekend ahead uh, thank you so much thank you so much for joining today